This is a guide on reinstalling the front assembly on the Apple iPhone 4. The front assembly contains the frame, the glass digitizer, and the LCD screen. We highly recommend replacing the entire front assembly if any of these components need replacing. Turn off the phone by holding the power button and confirming shutdown on screen. Using the Apple approved SIM removal tool, Pop the SIM card out and set it aside. A magnetic bit screwdriver is a must for this job, but did you know you can make any screwdriver magnetic? Simply hit and rub the tip of the screwdriver against a powerful magnet to temporarily magnetize your screwdriver. It will eventually demagnetize, at which point you can repeat the procedure. Using your Phillips screwdriver, Remove the two bottom screws. Set the two screws aside. Then gently slide the back cover up about 3 mm, then pull up from the top edge. In order to remove the front assembly, most major components will have to come out. We highly recommend that you draw a map of screws and components down on a piece of paper, then lay your screws on that map as you go along. Here we just remove the battery connector screw. As well, we'll keep this virtual map of screws and components up throughout the uh, disassembly and reassembly process. We'll mark every present screw in the component green and every absent one red. As you can see, the battery screw is already removed. So here on the map, we have the frame, then every screw that will need to be removed that is directly visible right now, the battery, speaker box, camera, vibrating motor, logic board, and a couple of fastening shields. We will also be removing screws under the components, which will be shown on the map during that step. We recommend removing the battery first. It is glued in, so something like a putty knife or any other flat wide tool will be very handy. Put the putty knife underneath the provided battery removal tab and gently pry up while pulling on the battery tab. Set the battery aside. Remove a little odd shaped piece near the battery mount and place it on the map. Go ahead and remove the screw off the first fastening shield. Put the screw on the map. Then remove the second screw off the same shield. Set both the screw and the shield on the map. We will then go ahead and remove the vibrating motor right screw, then the left screw and the vibrating motor. Set both of them on the map. The vibrating motor connects via contact pins, so there is no connectors or cables to remove. Then proceed on removing the top fastening shield screws, a total of 5 screws holding in place. Most of the screws are different size and are unique to their place, so make sure they land on the correct spot on the map. Once you remove 5 screws, the upper shield can be removed. You may need to slide it down about a millimeter to pop it off its brackets on the bottom edge. Set the shield on the map. Then, remove a logic board screw, which will be covered by a white circle. That white circle is a water damage indicator, which is used to determine whether the phone was subjected to water exposure. Then, using your flat screwdriver, Pop open the middle connector and peel the flex cable up. Then, disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna cable from the logic board. Go ahead and remove the two screws securing the speaker box. Then remove the speaker box. Then, using your flat bit, remove the last screw securing the logic board in place. Then, using the same flat bit, gently pick open the connectors which tie the peripherals from all over the phone into the logic board. These four connectors are best picked from the right side. The next two connectors are for the LCD and the digitizer. Those are best picked from the bottom edge. And finally, the camera connection is best picked from the right side. Once all the connectors are open, remove the camera. At this point, the logic board can be removed. Ensure that all the connectors are not in the way and pick the logic board from the bottom edge 
and lift up, ensuring nothing is getting caught. Set the logic board aside. And now, only 10 more screws separate us from removing the front assembly. There are 4 tiny screws in every corner, and 6 more screws with washers, 3 on each side of the frame. Once all the screws have been removed and documented, you can proceed on removing the front assembly. It is glued in place at the top and the bottom edges. At this point, we recommend using a putty knife or a case opening tool to separate the front assembly. Start at the bottom edge and gently move along the perimeter, lifting the front assembly from the mid frame. Make sure to route the LCD and the digitizer connectors through the frame before fully separating the front assembly. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the new front assembly. Make sure to remove the protective plastic from the bottom of the LCD. Then, route the connectors back through the frame. It is very important to pull the connectors through all the way, otherwise you will not be able to reconnect them on the logic board properly. Pay extra attention that nothing is getting caught and that both connectors are aligned with each other. Squeeze the top and the bottom edges on the front assembly to catch the adhesive. Replace the six side screws, ensuring that the washers are present on all of them. Then replace the four corner screws. Readjust the connectors and proceed on replacing the logic board. Slide it in from the bottom, top edge goes down first. Ensure that the board is in proper alignment with the mounting holes. Then replace the speaker box. Make sure that the left mount slides under the logic board and that the Wi-Fi antenna is flush with the frame. Then replace the two screws and reconnect the Wi-Fi cable to the logic board. Then, using the flat screwdriver, replace the top right logic board screw. Then replace the camera and plug it in. Then replace the screw that was under the water damage indicator. You may also replace the water damage indicator if needed. Then, secure the remaining five connectors to the logic board. Each one makes a fairly distinctive click when plugged in properly. Then, replace the top fastening shield. It needs to slide from the bottom in order to catch its mounting bracket. Once the shield is properly aligned, replace the five screws holding it in place. Then, you can reconnect the middle connector, which ties in the docking port to the motherboard. Then, replace and secure the vibrating motor. Then replace the final fastening shield and two screws. Then replace the odd shaped piece near the battery connector. This piece connects the battery ground to the back cover to provide better shielding and to diminish wireless signal noise. At this point, you can reconnect the battery. We recommend plugging in the connector, then simply dropping the battery in its bay. Then secure the battery connector screw and then you can replace the back cover. Put it down about 3mm offset from the bottom edge, then slide it down in place. Then replace your bottom two screws, replace the SIM card, and finally remove the screen protector from the new assembly, and you're done.